We're going to start off with Coach Hammock, like Joe said, let him uh, talk about the team a little bit, talk about the upcoming season, and then we'll take questions for Coach Hammock. And then we're joined by uh, five Husky players, and we will bring them on each individually and uh, allow you to ask questions of all of them. And then they'll uh, kind of be probably be dismissed afterwards. So make sure you get all your questions in uh, as we bring each one up. So coach, uh, get us started and uh, talk a little bit about your uh, team season and how things are going so far. Well, I think uh, number one, we're, we're certainly excited about the opportunity um, that we have to be able to play this, this fall. And um, our, our young men have worked extremely hard um, to get to this point. Uh, obviously there was a lot of uncertainty early, um, but now that we, we know we have a, a season, uh, we know the opponent, um, the focus, the attention to detail uh, has been outstanding. Uh, and for us, I think we are a much improved football team. Um, and, you know, to me, the only people that matter are the people in our locker room, uh, the people that, that go out on the practice field every day, uh, the young men that's on this call, in the work that they put in. Uh, and, and what you will see from a team is you're going to see a competitive team, uh, a team that's extremely hungry, uh, a, a team that has a burning desire to win. Uh, and that's what I've seen every day at practice. So um, offensively, we got a lot of pieces um, that we feel good about. Uh, the competition on both sides of the ball have been uh, outstanding. Um, but up front, it starts uh, with the linemen. Uh, you know, every good offense is is led by the offensive lineman. We got a quarterback with returning experience, uh, second year in the program, uh, has a better understanding of our offense and what we need from him. Uh, we got running backs that can make explosive plays, uh, that can make people miss, that can be involved in the passing game. We got wide receivers that, that uh, made a tremendous jump uh, from last year to this year. And then we have a tight end who, who, who made a lot of plays for us. So offensively, we want to have the ability to, to control the game, uh, to control the tempo of the game. Uh, obviously, planning in November and December, uh, who knows what the elements may bring, uh, but we will fully embrace it. Uh, we're going to practice in it. We will, you know, uh, not be surprised if it's windy. We will not be surprised if it's raining. Uh, we will not be surprised if it's cold, uh, and we will be well equipped uh, for whatever um, comes on game day. Defensively, I think we got a, a, a lot of guys um, that are ath athletic, they're big, they're physical. Um, you know, one thing we can say, it's been a physical camp. Uh, every day has, has brought its own physical challenges. And defensively, um, those guys have matched, matched the tempo. And up front, we got guys that um, with Weston Kramer and, and, and DeMond Taylor and James Esther. And on, on the edges, we got some size. At the linebacker position, we got guys with experience. Um, it, it's good to have Lance the back and Cal Pugh back that gives uh, leadership um, at the second level of our defense. And on the back end, uh, we got size. And we got, you know, obviously Dylan Thomas will talk here in a little bit. He's done a good job leading uh, that, that young secondary. And uh, we got some guys that have the ability to make plays on the ball. And I think that's big uh, for defense. And then special teams-wise, uh, I think we should, you know, have the best um, court, you know, uh, triplets of, of special team performance. We got a punter, uh, a snapper, uh, and a kicker who all has returning experience, and we're excited about what they can do. Uh, so we're looking forward to the upcoming season. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do between now and November 4th. Uh, we got a big-time opponent in Buffalo coming here uh, with a top-notch uh, running back, uh, you know, probably one of the better teams in the MAC. Uh, and we're going to embrace the opportunity to go out there and play free, uh, play loose, and, and play aggressive. Okay. Uh, thanks, Coach. Uh, we're going to take questions now. Uh, please uh, use the function and uh, raise your hand, and we'll be, you'll be admitted and unmuted. Also, quick note that... Um, we are recording this uh, press conference and it will be put up on uh, our YouTube channel uh, later tonight or tomorrow. Okay, James, let me um, unmute you really quick. Uh, yes. James Krause. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yep. 
All right, excellent. Uh, Coach, the first question I had was just, uh, do you anticipate a, a different offense this year dealing with the departures you had uh, in the back core and also knowing that now you will have a, a quarterback who's been in your system for now some, uh, well over a year? No, I, I don't anticipate the offense uh, changing. I anticipate the offense being better uh, and more effective and more exp explosive. Um, I think we have a quarterback that understands our, our system uh, and, and what everybody else's role is on, on offense. Uh, and I think he's going to take more command. And um, obviously, we're going to give him some more flexibility uh, to get guys directed. And, and I think what you're going to see is you got guys that around him that can make plays. And uh, we're excited about where the offense is headed. James, anything else? I, that's it for me. Sorry. Go ahead, Eddie. You should be unmuted. Okay, Coach. I was just um, kind of following up what James said just a little bit. What would this offense look like uh, compared to last year, functioning on all cylinders, kind of being more explosive like you, like you talked about? What do you envision that kind of looking like? Well, you know, for us, first of all, we want to have balance. Uh, we want to have the ability to run the football when we want to or when we need to and throw it uh, equally as well. And so, you know, a perfect offense, uh, if you can have, you know, 225 yards rushing and 225 yards passing, uh, that would be a perfect balance. And, and that, gives you, that gives you an opportunity to control the game uh, and, and gives our offensive linemen a chance to uh, come off the ball when, we when it's time to run it. Uh, and, and at least give them a change that when we want to throw it. So we want to be able to run the football, uh, set up our play action pass, uh, stay in normal down and distance that give our, our, our quarterback and our office a chance to, uh, to move the ball on third downs. And to me, I think that's what you'll see. I think, you know, we got some backs uh, that can make people miss uh, and create explosive plays in the running game. I think we got some receivers that can make contested catches. Uh, and we got a tight end that's a safety valve. Um, that that is, is, is sneaky, uh, quick, and sneaky athletic that can make a lot of plays in the passing game. Okay. Anyone else looking for uh, to ask uh, Coach Hammock a quick question? Any other questions for Coach Hammock? Derek Bain, let me uh, let me unmute you, Derek. Go ahead, Derek. You should be good to go. Hey, Coach. Just. Uh... From when you got the go-ahead to, to have a fall season here, just what's the last few weeks been like in terms of, you know, has it been a whirlwind? Has just the excitement been high? What's, what's the energy kind of been like for you guys? Well, you know, it is, uh, you know, you go to the summer and there was so much uncertainty about if we play in, uh, when we plan, if we plan in the spring. And, and what you've seen the last couple of weeks is the, the focus uh, of our football team has been outstanding. Uh, and it's been very easy to go out there and coach every day uh, with the amount of attention to detail and the focus that these young men have, uh, have had over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so to me, I enjoy practice. I enjoy going out there and watching those guys compete. Um, and they've competed extremely hard over the last couple of weeks. And uh, we, we got another 10 days or so to go uh, to put the final you know, finishing touches on it. But I expect this to be uh, a well-tuned uh, up uh, football team. Uh, come November 4th. Thanks, Coach. All right, Shannon, Ryan? Should be unmuted, Shannon. Okay, yeah, sorry. I don't know why I can't get my video, but, um, and sorry, I got on a little late, so if this is apologies. But, um, Thomas, when you look at other leagues that have had um, some, you know, missteps with COVID and have had outbreaks, what what can you learn from those teams? What are you know, even brainstorming ideas you guys have had to take extra precautions? Well, it's a, it's a constant education for our players. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about every team that's had an outbreak, why they've had an outbreak, uh, whether it's college or the pros. Uh, and we try to make sure that we take, we are taking the proper steps necessary uh, to avoid that happening in our program. And I think our young men have done an excellent job. I think the testing protocols, um, by the MAC is outstanding. You know, we test them four times a week. Uh, the guys know they're getting tested. I think they've been very smart uh, in the building, outside the building, 
uh, making sure that we can control um, this virus as, as best as possible. Because uh, one thing we've talked about, everybody on our team is important. The depth of our team is important. And uh, you can go from being a backup or a fourth string to a starter uh, very, very quickly. So uh, I'm happy with where we're at. Uh, we got another two weeks to go and hopefully we can have everybody available to us on November 4th. There are little things like, or maybe not little, but um, <laughs> there's, you know, I think Notre Dame went from having benches to chairs and spacing those out or, you know, not having pregame meals. What, what have you switched up um, just day to day, game day experience wise? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I've learned a lot from the Notre Dame uh, experience when they had their outbreak. I think they said it was because they had a team meal uh, setting. Uh, so we obviously changed, our, we're going to change our team meal or pregame meal to a free flow. Uh, so we don't have everybody at, at uh, one time or one spot. Uh, we've obviously adjusted the locker room um, to have, uh, you know, certain guys in one locker room, other guys in another um, to, to, to minimize the spread. Uh, team meetings are kind of a mix between uh, some in person, uh, some on Zoom. Uh, we've done a lot more Zoom position meetings. Uh, so we're trying to take the, the steps necessary um, to, to be cautious in our approach uh, to make sure that we, do, we don't have an outbreak on our team. Thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Buddha. I just asked you, and yeah, you should be good, Mike. Okay. Hi, hey Coach. Uh, do you expect kind of the intensity of these games to be a lot higher knowing that, you know, all your kids have been waiting a lot longer than normal to be playing games and you only get, you know, six games this season? Well, I think anytime you go out there to play, uh, the intensity is ramped up. Uh, I, I don't anticipate it being any higher um, than it would be uh, any, any other time that you play. Um, you know, one thing I have been impressed with is, is our intensity in practice. Uh, and, and how physical we're practicing uh, and how our team is uh, really responding um, to the to the style of play that we want to we, we want to approach it with. And so I think if they take that same approach that they practice with, uh, I think we'll be just fine. Is your approach to the season changing at all? Um, well, I, I think, uh, you, you know, I think because of when we're playing, how we're playing, uh, my approach is, has changed slightly, um, and I'll give you an example. You know, we're going to practice outside every day. Um, and, and one reason, I, I learned a valuable lesson last year when we played uh, Central Michigan. You know, we, I think we had beat um, Akron the week before. We were feeling pretty good. We went indoors uh, in the indoor facility because they got cold that week. And, you know, we, we didn't play well against Central Michigan. And, and so the rest of the season, we stayed outside. So you know, we're not going to go through that same growing experience, that same growing pain of, you know, we're going to practice in the elements, we're going to play in the elements, and we're going to embrace the elements. Uh, so I, I've changed uh, my approach. I mean, it, it, it's the hard way, uh, and that's what we're going to do, and that's how we're going to play. Thanks, Coach. Okay, uh, WIFR. Uh, hey, Coach, this is uh, Joe Oma uh, with WIFR. Uh, just a couple quick questions here. Um, you know, it is only a six-game ske schedule. Uh, how important is it to get off to a, such a quick start this year, obviously, uh, you know, coming off a losing season last year? Yeah, I think, obviously, you want to get off to a great start. Um, the one thing I will say is the way the schedule maps out, uh, playing a crossover game first, you know, in a good opponent, you know, we're going to go out there and play our best football. Um, but at the same time, understand that that's a crossover game. Uh, our division opponents count. Uh, you know, we used to talk in the NFL, your division opponents count for a game and a half. Uh, so we're going to go out there and play Buffalo and, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But understand, you know, we got to beat the, the, the teams on our side of the division uh, to get to where we want to be. And the other question I had, uh, just with it being no fans in the stands, you're going to see the cardboard cutouts. Just how uh, – you know, you've had the practices out in the stadium the last few weeks here, but what is it that going to be like when you see uh, nobody, no fans in the stands there? I think it's going to be fun. I think we, we, we've created our own, our own energy and our own juice, and I think our players have bought into that. We have a lot of excitement now in the practice. Uh, so to me, you know, we, we'll be fully prepared uh, when November 4th comes. Uh, I think it would be good to have their parents there, uh, where their parents can watch them play, and really, those are the only people that matter. 
uh, the people that love you, the people that support you, the people that's been there for you from the beginning, and, and for them to have the opportunity to have their family there, uh, it'll be good. But we won't have any problem having juice and energy uh, for the game. I can promise you that. I guess last question then for me also, uh, just kind of playing off of that, how much are you really leaning on your upperclassmen, your juniors, your seniors, your redshirt seniors, like a, a Ross Bowers, a Cole Tucker, those kind of guys? Well, you know, I think um, – we depend on everybody. I think sometimes as seniors and juniors, you have your routines. Uh, and I think that's where young players can help guys uh, because they bring a certain level of unknown and excitement uh, that they're going to come out. They don't have the scars, the battle, the, the battle scars uh, like some other guys. So, you know, a, a junior and senior, sometimes they know their routine. Uh, but what you see is you see young guys come in and, and go make plays and go hit people in the face. And uh, that, that creates some more excitement for the upperclassmen. So uh, I think we got a great mix of, of, of senior leadership uh, and young guys that's going to be able to play and compete uh, and bring the type of energy that we need to play well. Thanks, Coach. All right. Let's go back to uh, James Kraus. He unmuted himself again. <clears throat> you should be unmuted now, James. Okay, thanks. Uh, I had a follow up question about uh, the the juice that you guys are creating in uh, practice. I talked to Dan Jackson, and he's very excited about this. Uh, and he said that this was something you came up with long before even you guys knew that the season uh, would be back underway. Uh, why is this such uh, an important aspect of the game that you had to address early was having these guys energized in, in a season where, you know, there have been a lot of ups and downs for these athletes dealing with uh, uh, the issues COVID has made. Yeah, well, I think, uh, number one, you know, I spent five years in the NFL. Um, and up there, you, you don't need energy. Those guys get paid to perform. I think the beauty of, of, of college football is you have young men, 18 to 22, 23 years old, um, that, that need energy, that need excitement, that need fans, that need different things. Uh, you know, we are in a social media era with these young men and they can't wait to put a picture up or a tweet out. Uh, so we want to make it fun for them and, and let them enjoy themselves and have fun. Uh, and I think that's going to allow them to, to have more energy, uh, you know, for games w without the fans being there. All right. Uh, Mark Lindo. Well, he's still muted. Hold on. Oh, you, you got me? Coach, uh, you talked about practicing outdoors every day. You're also gone to the morning, and a lot of a lot of programs have gone to that. What are the biggest benefits? Are guys sharper? Do analytics say, say that they're more aware and brighter in, in the daytime? How has that benefited your program? And we do that all well, year. Well, I think you know part of the problem for us has been the class schedules. Um, obviously, they they got a different class schedule uh, with with COVID and all the classes online and different things like that. But I couldn't be more pleased with, with being able to practice in the morning. I think, you know, guys wake up, they, they get their work in, um, and then we'll come back later in the afternoon and, and bring them back for meetings. But, you know, your physical work is out, is out the way. Uh, and I think that's a big thing. A lot of times uh, when you practice in the afternoons, you don't have class, uh, you, may have, you may come out, you know, sluggish or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and we've been able to get uh, crisp work um, with our guys. I think I think the effort and the energy has been there. Uh, and I really like the, the the morning schedule. I don't know how the players feel, but I really like it. They they get in, they they get get their work done. Uh, and and by eight o'clock in the morning, you know you can focus on school and get everything else done that you need to get done. Yeah, I got one more uh, on defensive side. On offense, it's easy to mix guys in. On defense. Your strength, as far as depth, seems to be linebacker. So, how do you get all those guys on the field to get your best your best athletes on the field at the same time? Well, you know, we're going to have packages uh, for guys. Um, you know, we we got guys that we need to get out there and play, uh, and guys that have proven uh, that they can make plays. Uh, and as, as veterans, as young guys, um, you know, I think that you know, creatively, we got some things that we can do. Uh, to get guys in different spots. We, we've talked about the depth chart. We've talked about uh, different ways to get guys on the field and how we want to do that. Um, but I will say, to me, I think uh, our defensive line and our linebackers have, has a lot of depth um, 
that can really help us uh, throughout the season. Any more questions for Coach Hammock? All right. Um, with that, uh, again, I'm sorry, I, was, I meant to tell everyone earlier, but we are recording this if I didn't mention that. Um, so with that, we're going to start with our uh, player interviews and we're going to um, go alphabetical order, everyone. So no one thinks I'm favoring anyone. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, quarterback, uh, senior quarterback, Ross Bowers. Um, Ross is here and he doesn't have to make a statement. We're just going to let him take questions. So um, let us know if you have a question for Ross. Hi, Ross. How you guys doing? <laughs> doing well. Garcia. Okay, Andy. Andy Garcia. Yeah. Go ahead, Andy. You should be unmuted. Andy. Okay, we'll go with uh, Mark. Mark. Back to Mark Lindo. Hey, Ross. Uh, last year was documented. You were playing your fourth offensive coordinator in four years. Now you coach Coach Eidness for the second straight year. How refreshing has that been to you to actually have some continuity for the first time in, I guess, five years? Yeah, it, it's made all the difference, to be honest. Just not having to learn an entire um, new way to talk and, you know, different lingo and this and that. And, you know, because, you know, the plays are pretty much the same. There's not much that's changed in football. You know, it's just what you call everything. And, how we, um, you know, get to those calls. So it's been so much easier for me to able, you know, just to stack my, uh, you know, previous knowledge on top of the experience I'm getting in practice, um, you know, with camp going on and this and that. It's been such an advantage. Um, and it's just, it's made such a big deal for just the comfortability. Um, you know, I feel more confident. I feel like I have a better grasp. Um, you know, you can compare it to it's your first year taking a language to the second year taking a language. You know, you're, you're going to be that much better um, in being able to communicate and, and operate in it. So I'm really excited that uh, we can keep uh, going at it. I got one more for you. If you had to assess the best part of your game, what would it be? Your biggest positive? Um, man, that's a good question. Um, I would say the best part of my game – um, would be I can bring people together. Um, I have a, I feel like a leadership quality that, um, you know, really motivates and inspires people, um, you know, and it, it, it kind of elevates everyone's game around me. Um, and that's when I've been on top of my game, that's what it's done. And uh, I'm hoping that we can do that this year. So. All right, we'll go to a question from uh, James Krauss. Uh, Ross, last year we, we talked about in the time leading up to the season opener against Illinois State, how it was kind of tough with the, the battle you and Marcus Childers were having to kind of get a grasp on what your role is going to be with this team. Now that you had that last year as a starter, and now you're coming in this year as a starter again, uh, does knowing where you sit in terms of, of a starting role do you think it's helped you or has that kind of all been changed with, with how COVID's been? Um, you know, I, you know, I, I, it's always easier, I guess, when you know you're the starter and, and everyone treats you that way, I guess, you know, but it's not something that I've really leaned on or, you know, really found comfort in, you know, it's not, you know, I'm not pleased with the way I played last year, whether, you know, I beat somebody great out or not. It, it's just, you know, I'm always looking internally and what I could do better. Um, you know, and we've had some great quarterbacks brought in that have pushed me, um, you know, that has been really good for my, you know, my competition level and to get me going and just to, um, you know, just elevate my game. So it's been fun, um, you know, not just coming in and just saying, you know, it's just a breeze and, you know, whatever. So, you know, you really got to compete and um, go earn your spot. So it's been fun for me um, to have that competition in practice and, you uh, just have that kind of driving force, you know, whether, you know, when you don't want to do something or when you want to take a break and relax. So, um, you know, it's, it's been fun. Um, I guess, you know, having this, you know, QB one role and, you know, how, you know, how people treat you in terms of, you know, just respect and this and that, which, 
has been refreshing and it's been fun for me just because that's something I've always wanted since, you know, I've gotten to college and, um, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm earning it on a daily basis and just want to continue to just keep growing in that, uh, you know, regard. Okay, we'll go to uh, Eddie Crefio from the Daily Chronicle. Go ahead, Eddie. How would you say, um, I guess, what would you say the biggest uh, areas or areas you need to improve from last year were or are and what, how have you been working on them, I guess? Yeah, so uh, I would just say first and foremost, just become a better leader. Um, you know, the quarterback position is obviously someone that gets looked at and um, needs to be the leader of the offense and hopefully the team. Um, and it just wasn't that for me last year. I just wasn't a, a positive voice. I wasn't a driving force to um, help us win games, it really felt like. So that's something I took very personal and really wanted to uh, fix, you know, and that really just starts with my day-to-day -day, um, routine, you know, and just trying to um, become a better quarterback, a better person, and, you know, just trying to become the best version of myself possible. Um, you know, and it's been, it's been great. It's been life changing for me since the season ended, just, um, you know, with many tough conversations with many, um, you know, hard times and moments, but that's what's helped me get to this point and feel ready to go and to be able to take over as a leader and, um, you know, to have confidence, you know, it's, that's the way I, I only feel confident is if I know I've done everything in my ability, um, you know, to help the team win. Um, and I can confidently say that, and that makes all the difference for me. Um, you know, and then on the field stuff, you just, you got to take care of the football. Um, you know, it's hard to win games when you're throwing interceptions or fumbling or, um, you know, you're just not on the field producing. So it's, that's definitely been something that I've taken into consideration of, you know, ball security is the number one thing in our program. Um, you know, and that needs to be put on a premium and, um, you know, and that's just studying your plays, studying the defense and, um, you know, knowing what the checks are, knowing what just the ins and outs of what we're trying to accomplish with each play. Um, and like you said, back to the second year of the offense, I feel so much more confident in knowing what to do and how to do it. Um, and, and now it's why we're doing it, you know, and that's what's been fun for me to really dive into the game. Um, and especially with a coach like uh, Coach E, you know, he is such a brilliant mind that it's just so fun to pick his brain and see you know, okay, well, what would you do here? Okay, and why? Okay, and this and that. And now we have game experience to say, okay, well, you did this great or you did this bad. We need to fix this or keep building on it. So um, it's been great for me to have a guy like that in my corner, um, you know, just to keep sharpening my tools and trying to figure out how to be the best quarterback I can be for this team. How have you seen your um, rhythm kind of uh, change with the guys, I guess, on the field over uh... – you know, the, the course of uh, from last year to this year? Because, I mean, it looks like it might have been there. And like, like with Tucker, obviously, I think every good rhythm was there. Offered, too. But yeah. in general, how do you say your rhythm overall has developed with maybe those other guys? Yeah, no, it's been great. You know, it's it's been tougher this off season just because we haven't been together, right? You know, I was in California for a lot of the quarantine, so I wasn't around the guys um, able to throw and able to build that chemistry. But a lot of the guys came back sharper than ever. You know, so you could, it's credit to them of, you know, perf uh, perfecting their craft, working on um, little things on a daily basis to help, you know, complete throws, to help make routes look cleaner, this and that. So it's been great um, for me just because everybody's elevated their game. So it makes it so much easier just to, you know, if there's a, a throw that's maybe six inches off, you know, they make a great catch and then, hey, it's okay. You know, so it's been so nice um, now getting back together this summer you know, having a chance to actually get with each other. Okay, let's go over our plays. Let's go over, you know, the, uh, you know, routes, depth, timing, um, you know, and just to the point where you feel comfortable. And that's been something where, you know, I feel confident. You know, I, there's, I don't know the exact number, but there's a ton of receivers and tight ends that I feel very comfortable with, um, you know, no matter what the coverage, no matter if it's man or zone. So it's been, um very fun for me just because I get to spread the ball around. I feel like the point guard of the offense. So it's been fun just getting the ball to these guys and seeing what they can do. Um, and I'm just really excited to see who steps up, you know, cause every, it's easy, it's easy in practice and it's easy um, when it's just us, you know, but then come game day, uh, I'm excited to see who steps up and um, you know, can make some plays for us. All right, let's go to uh, Joe from WIFR. 
Hey, Ross. Yeah, you kind of you know kind of touched on it there a little bit with um, you know Eddie's kind of question there, but you know Cole Tucker, you know Daniel Crawford, you kind you've been obviously with them a little bit now. So just what kind of uh, how much are you really depending on th those kind of guys to really help make those plays when you guys need it the most? Uh, you know, I got a chance to see you guys on practice on Sunday and it looked like you and, and Tucker really had some chemistry working there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I put all my faith and trust in them, you know, and that's, um, it might sound like a huge deal in this and that, but if you saw what they do on a daily basis, you would do the same thing. Um, you know, the way that they work um, is inspiring and it's something that, when you see them have success, it's no surprise, um, you know, and then when you see them have a mistake, you see why they're so great because they fix it, you know, um, or they're working on it after to not make that same mistake again. Um, you know, just for an example, you know, we're in, we're in a scrimmage and um, Tyrese Ritchie makes a great play and almost scores and he, you know, he happens to fumble the ball and we're, you know, offense is a little biased. We maybe think the ground caused the fumble, but you know, the defense had the, the rep of the day with that fumble. Then literally the next drive, you know, he catches a ball, takes it, great ball security. And then after that drive is over, he goes and works on ball security for about an hour during the rest of the scrimmage. So that just tells you kind of where guys' minds are at. You know, you know I'm not going to wait to fix something. I'm not going to hope that something gets better. You know, we're really taking everything in, into our own hands and in our own control, um, you know, and not just hoping for the best, you know, because we know that we can be better and we know that, um, our team needs us. So it's been fun to see all these guys just grinding. Like at, at the end of the day, it's just fun to see, you know, the work paying off, you know, and in practice, it's been so nice to actually have some success, um, you know, and just something that we can build on. So. And I'm going to ask, you know, the same question I asked coach Hammock there, just, uh, you know, you, you only get six games to play this season. So just, how important is it really to get off to a, you know, a quick start, you know, last year, just going five and seven, um, you know, you have a chance to match that win total, but just getting those six games, what is that going to be like for you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's awesome. You know, it's something that once we got the news, you know, it just ignited our fire again, you know, just cause it was so tough hearing the back and forth of, you know, are we going to play? Are we not going to play? And, um, and then seeing all the other conferences around the country playing and we're the only ones not. So it was kind of hard dealing with that. And then once we got the good news, you know, it was, you know, it was just going forward from then on. It has been great. So it's been fun to know that we do have six and potentially a seventh game that um, we can play. And, um, you know, some people, you know, I've heard at least just seen on Twitter, you know, like, why are we playing such a short schedule, this and that, you know, we just are excited to be playing, you know, whether it's one game or 12. You know, we're excited just to have an opportunity. Um, and especially if the MAC championship, um, you know, is available, we definitely want to be in the running for it. So we're excited to get our chance. And, uh, you know, we're really just trying to make sure that uh, we're as ready as we can go for November 4th. So. And my last one real quick, uh, you know, we've heard the coaches, we've heard, uh, you know, Sean Frazier talk about uh, the testing protocols, all of that, just as a player, how confident and how, uh, uh, do you feel about everything that the school has implemented, the conference has implemented to make sure you guys are safe as, as possible? Yeah, I, you know, they've done such an outstanding job. Um, you know, this is the, this is the safest place we could be. Um, like, you know, being at home or this or that, you know, you're not around a, a people that are getting tested on a daily basis or in our bubble. Um, you know, so they've made us feel so comfortable um, just with, you know, hey, this, you know, if somebody did test or this or that, you know, let's make sure we, you know, get separation, let's make sure we quarantine this and that. And we've done something, they've done a great job um, of in, uh, implementing, um, you know, just kind of plans of, hey, if this happens, we're going to do this, if this happens, then that. So it's been very easy to follow. Um, they've made it very easy on us just in terms of the four, uh, four times a week of testing, you know, you, it takes five minutes, um, you know, and they're doing, um, such an easy job just making it you know flow and uh, you know you're not getting held up or anything like that crazy so um, you know my hat goes off to all our training staff and um, you know just and even our equipment staff too they've done it and our uh, strength staff too they've all been in um, conjunction together really trying to help cre uh, maintain our bubble um, you know and, and I think our players have done a great job too you know it, it'd been easy to go out um, you know and 
have these huge get togethers or this and that just because we're so bored and you know whatever but we've done a great job staying inside um and trying to limit you know our contact and uh you know i'm just very happy with where we're at you know we've been very lucky um you know it's just it's been funny to see uh you know people getting bashed or whatever online just you know for having COVID or this it's it's, it's such a chance thing um, in my opinion. So it's been nice that we've been lucky not to have such a crazy outbreak or, um, you know, like some other teams that you do see. So, um, I'm just hoping that we can stay healthy and, um, just keep having the luck in our favor. Thanks Ross. Thank you. It's a great job. We appreciate you, uh, joining us on. Oh, I'm, I'm muted. Joe. You're oh, unmuted. Okay. Uh, we are going to move on now to, uh, tight end, uh, Daniel Crawford, uh, senior and, uh, Put him in the spotlight here. And Daniel, thanks for joining us. Uh, at this point, we will uh, take any questions for Daniel Crawford. How y'all doing? How are you? Eddie. Eddie. I have no idea. Eddie, 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 go ahead. All right. So, uh, Daniel, just. Uh, with, with the offense, just just how are things looking, especially in the passing game element? Um, what are you guys looking as a team? Think you got to do better from last year? Um, I think in the passing game, what we have to do as an offense better than we did last year it was probably just doing new routes with different coverages. So every route this year has an adjustment depending on the coverage. So last year we were very stagnant, I, I think, in the receiver room as far as reading coverages and stuff. We didn't want to make it too complicated because that was the first year that we were learning an offense. And this year, because we are more comfortable with things, we have more adjustments off of different routes and coverages. So I feel like that's one thing that as a whole offensively that in the passing game that we can do and will do better is make adjustments depending on the coverages. That's good for me. All right. Uh, Joe, Joe from WIFR. Hold on just a minute. And there he is. And you're good, Joe. Ross mentioned uh, that you guys got back together after the quarantine and really got a chance to work together. Just how confident are you guys in your ability to, to make those connections, make those adjustments and, and really kind of get this offense going? Because we've seen times where, you know, it is pretty stagnant uh, moving the ball uh, at times. Uh, I think we're very confident in everybody's ability on the offense. Actually, uh, we're very, we have, a, even though we're young, we have a lot of depth, I feel like. And, and that's all across the board, but uh, we have good running backs. We have a great offensive line. We have great receivers and we have a great offensive coordinator. And I feel like all of those things combined will just lead to success. So we're just excited to show everybody what we can do November 4th. And, you know, as a, as Rose, one more, sorry, uh, Donna, uh, just as a, um, as a tight end, obviously you kind of have to do a little bit of everything, blocking, pass, catching, uh, just what for you have you had to work on overall in your game to be better for this year? Uh, well, I think for me personally, overall, what I worked on is just my body and my stamina and my mental. Um, I'm trying to learn every aspect of the game now, it's not just what the tight end does, but what an offensive lineman does, what a running back does, what a receiver does, what a defensive back does, what Lance does on defense, a linebacker. All those things matter to me now, trying to take my game to the next level. So I feel like as far as taking my stamina and my physique and my um, mental to another level is just something that'll help me elevate my game and help the Huskies. Thanks, Daniel. All right, James Krauss. I had two questions for Daniel. First off, uh, you on the offensive side are, are one of the veterans and you're going to be helping the coaching staff probably bring along a, a huge freshman class. Uh, what are your thoughts on kind of having that role uh, this season, not just being a player and getting things done on the field on game day, but in the practices, bringing along uh, the guys on offense that you're going to be setting up for the next generation of, of uh, teams. Yeah, that's something that I've actually tried to take a lot of pride in as of recent is just setting the culture and the standard of the way things should be done and how they have been done correctly from what I've seen 
uh, my years at NIU. So I feel like me just showing those young guys, like, because usually I'm used to, like Coach Hammock said earlier, all, older guys, they have their routine. They know what they have to do before practice, after practice, things like that. And my biggest challenge was bringing people along. So now I'm I'm figuring out how to still do my routine, still handle myself and make sure I can perform as well as bringing others along with me so that they can perform as well. And I feel like if I showed them how to do that, it just creates a lineage of greatness at NIU. And that's something that I really want to try and leave as my mark here, regardless of any MAC championships or anything, just teach guys how to do things the right way. And then my, my second question uh, would be on uh, Dan Jackson, when I talked to him about this juice committee stuff, he, you were one of the guys that he pointed to and said that you've really embraced it. Uh, from a player's perspective, how excited uh, is this group in terms of uh, how things have gone with that so far and some of the things you guys plan to do to bring some more excitement to games? I feel like it's awesome, you know, because as soon as we brought up the juice committee, everybody wanted to be a part of it. They see somebody out there with that yellow jersey on and they just want to be a, they just want to be a part of that. They want to bring the juice. So I feel like it's a competition thing already with guys. You know, you see one guy with the yellow jersey on, you want to be the guy out there next day that's, that says, hey, I thought he had the juice. So guys are just out there every day just bringing that energy no matter. And it's contagious. It's, it's very hard to be negative when you got a group of guys around you being positive. It's just. And if you are negative, then we're we're good on you, honestly. That's just how it is lately. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, appreciate you. you joining us today. We are going to uh, move you're over. You're good, Daniel. Yep, you're good. We're going to move on to the defensive uh, side of the ball and bring on uh, linebacker Lance DeVoe. Uh, let us know if you have uh, questions for Lance. Just give us a minute. Lance, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Good to see your face. <laughs> see you guys too. <laughs> I get to see much of you guys. Oh, hold on here, Mark. Let me unmute you here really quick. All right, go ahead, Mark Lindo. Yeah, Lance, uh, last fall I'd be at practice, I'd see you and Kyle Pugh on the sidelines all the time commiserating because you were both out. How, how much have you guys fed off each other to get back and be able to enjoy playing again? Uh, well, you know, it's just a blessing, you know, to be here again and have the opportunity to play for the Huskies. So, you know, we kind of just fed off each other, you know, trying to keep each other positive, you know, trying to bring along the young guys, you know, coming into this year. So, you know, we, we just been trying to make sure, you know, our, our mental, you know, is staying positive and, you know, come back and, and be able to lead this team this year. All right, we'll go to a question from Eddie Carifio from the Daily Chronicle. Lance, just um, this might be, I guess, retreading old ground a little, but um, what's um, Daniel mentioned the yellow jerseys. Just what are the yellow jerseys? I was just kind of wondering the significance of those, and just just kind of overall, how, how have you seen the the I guess the juice project kind of working out for you guys so far? Uh, you know, I, I think it's you know, I think it's a good thing for us. You know, with us possibly you know not having many fans, you know, during the games. Coach creating, you know, the whole bring your own juice jersey. I think it's it's brought a lot more energy to practice, you know, and, you know, letting guys know that, you know, game day, we got to be our own cheerleaders. You know, we got to cheer our guys on. We got to feed off each other's energy. Who gets the yellow jerseys? Like whoever just brought the most juice, so to speak, in a practice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the most part. Okay. I'm good. Any other questions for Lance? Oh, no. John Lomo, hold on, let me try and unmute you here really quick. All right, Joe, should be good. Yeah, you can depend on me to ask a question. Uh, Lance, uh, you know, this defense has been uh, pretty much the calling card of this, this program for a few years now. So just what is it going to be like to kind of get out there, not have that home crowd that you can rely on to kind of get pumped up for those third downs and just really help get these, you know, the offense back on the field and, and get some wins here? Uh, well, you know, I think we got a, a good group of guys, you know, that's that's going to, you know, be, be cheering, us, cheering the guys on, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, we got to go out there and play. We got to feed off each other, you know, whether it's fans, 
or no fans, you know, we still got to go out there, play, execute, cheer on the offense, and, you know, do what we got to do to come out with a win. So, uh, and, and what would you say, you know, I got a chance to kind of see it on Sunday a little bit, just the energy, you know, coach mentioned it a little bit, the energy in practice when you guys have these scrimmages, just kind of going at each other, obviously you're trying not trying to hurt each other, but you really are trying to make each other better. What have those been like for you in, in practice? Uh, it's been a lot of competition going on this camp, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're just trying to get each other better. You know, we're trying to make sure we get each other ready for, you know, November 4th. So, you know, I think this camp has been, a, you know, a good competition, physical, you know, just to get us ready. Right, thanks, Lance. Okay, James Krauss. Uh Lance, you and Kyle are both coming back from uh, uh, injuries – uh, last season, uh, during last year, what do you think was something that even while you were hurt, you think you were able to get better at as a football player uh, that you're going to be able to carry into this year with a, a group that uh, really flourished even despite the injuries last year? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was, uh, you know, being more of a vocal leader. You know, usually since I've been here, I've been, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit the guy behind the scenes, you know, getting guys right. But I've been trying to, you know, harp on being more of a vocal leader, you know, helping these young guys, you know, since we have, a, you know, a young group, you know. So I've just been trying to, you know, do whatever I can do to make sure, you know, these guys know what they're doing and, and get them ready for November 4th. Great. All right. All right. I think, uh, Lance, you are, you are great. And we appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for being here. Um, okay. We're going to move on to uh, back to the offensive side of the ball. Thanks, Lance. To, uh, Thanks. Offensive, offensive lineman uh, Ben Olson joining us now. So let everyone, please let us know if you have questions for Ben. Ben, how are you today? Good. How are you guys? Doing great. Good, ben. Just a minute here. We'll. Go ahead, Joe. Joe? Ben, you, uh, you you guys got a little bit of a mix of both, uh, you know, younger guys and older guys on this line. So what, uh, as your role on this line, what would you say it is? Yeah, I think um, personally, I think my role is just to, uh, to show the young guys um, how to bring it every day. You know, we have a few old guys that have been able to provide some leadership, but we have a pretty young group for the most part. So I think um, – my role as an older guy is to bring the younger guys along and show them the right way to do things. And this year having Ross, you know, as your QB1, knowing who it is going to be, you know, back there slinging the ball and handing it off, does that make it a little easier for the offensive line to kind of know a cadence, kind of know a rhythm of how he wants to uh, handle the offense a little bit better? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think as an offensive line, we have a lot of confidence in Ross. Um, you know, we know he's a great quarterback and we know what he brings to the table and, you know, just being, being with him for a second year now, um, we have that much more chemistry together. And I think that's going to really help us on the field this year. And, you know, again, a lot of this is being brought up about, you know, the juice committee, the, you know, just the no fans in the stands are just, uh, is it nice to know on the offensive line is it is going to be a little bit more quiet? You don't have to worry about, you know, piping down the fans or anything like that to kind of know uh, when to get off the ball. Yeah. I mean, it is going to be kind of odd this year, not having any fans there, but, you know, I think as an offensive line, we just try to focus on the things that we can't control. I mean, we just got to go out there and execute and do our jobs. Um, it doesn't really matter, you know, who's in the stands for us. And the, the blocking schemes have that really, change at all obviously a little you get a little bit more used to the offense now from year one to year two um I wouldn't say it really changes that much I mean we have a few new wrinkles in our offense but for the most part um, our plays are just the same we've just gotten you know that much better at executing them in year two all right thanks Ben yep all right we'll go to James Krause from the Northern Star uh, ben, you'll be dealing uh, blocking for a, a very different uh, running back core this year, obviously, with now Nettles having opt out uh, and Harbison transferring last year. Is there any sort of, of difference uh, that the O-line has to take into account 
from year to year when they have such different uh, running back core that they work with? Um, no, I, I don't really think so. I mean, we as an offensive line, we know that we have some really talented backs in that room. Um, obviously, we've had some departures, but we're, we're really confident in who we got back there. And I don't think our approach to how, how we block for any given guy really changes. Okay, we'll go to uh, Mark Lindo. Hey, Ben, you were talking about schemes before, and you said you just want to execute better. But when your team is running the football, what is your best scheme as a unit? Is it is it zone or power? Is it pin and play? Like, what are you guys, what are you best at and most comfortable with it? You know, third down and short, whatever, when you got to get that those couple yards. Uh, yeah, I think as an offensive line, we take a lot of pride in being able to run the football, especially, you know, this season we're going to be playing – through November and even into December. So we know as an no O-line that we're going to have to be able to run the football. Um, I think when we really need it most, um, we got some guys that are really going to step up for us. You know, we like to keep a good variety of, of what we bring to the table. We bring, you know, a little inside zone, a little outside zone, and even some power games. So I think we feel really confident in each of those three. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Olson? Oh, you got one more from Joe. Yeah, Ben, just real quick about the, you know, about the, the six game schedule, just how important is it to get off to that quick start and, and really get back into the driver's seat of this division? Yeah, I mean, with only playing six games, we know that every game is even that much more critical. I mean, Obviously, we would have wanted to play 12 games, but we just got to deal with what we're given, and we're really blessed to be able to play six. That's all. All right, Ben, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. And uh, last but certainly not least, Thanks, uh, we're going to bring on uh, cornerback uh, Dylan Thomas. Uh, Dylan, thanks for waiting it out. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for being here today. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get any questions we have for Dylan. Should we just go to Joe? <laughs> go ahead, Joe. I got you guys. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Dylan, I see the sign there in the background, the hard way sign there. And it's, it's got some uh, signatures and whatnot. Just what does that mean to, to be here at NIU, have it the hard way, you know, in, in second year now with Coach Hammock? Um, I feel like it's, like it's definitely just a brotherhood, you know. Um, it's just put in work day in and day out with the same guys for – a full year not knowing what situation can happen, especially like during times like this with COVID. And it's just um just that brotherhood and unity for sure I'd say. How much has that that unity, that brotherhood, especially like you mentioned the COVID been uh for this group not being able to kind of get those team gatherings, you know, just uh as often as you probably would like? Um, you know, like that that's a part of it, but I think at the same time, um just with like the, sm the small groups of things that we can do, like during the summer, it was calling guys up, hey, let's, let's go to the grass field with five or six guys and getting to work and doing different things like that. And so through like all the adversity, I'd say, um, like we find, we, we found ways to just to get, come together and do things as a team, even with like the tough times we were faced with, I would say. And uh, I guess, again, the six game schedule, just how, how nice is it to know that you're going to be able to play and get some of the games here. And it, it's going to be, you know, sloppy tracks here in November, and December, and that might be able to uh, take advantage of that on the defensive side of the ball as well. Oh, no, we love it. Um, it yeah, it's definitely going to be um, definitely going to be much more of a run emphasis, I feel like, with the weather, the, the later season, the weather. So our D-line is going to be monsters. We know that Wesson. Demond, all them boys are gonna be crazy, and then you got Kyle and Lance, and just that our, our whole our whole back end is just ready for it. So I think throw the ball, good luck, and up front, you know what's coming. So perfect, thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm. All right, James uh, Kraus from the Northern Star, go ahead. Uh, Dylan, you're gonna be sort of the head man for this group uh, in the secondary this year. Uh, a lot of guys graduating, some guys uh, transferring out. Uh, how has that transition been from uh, sort of one of the younger guys on the team to suddenly you're at the top of the the, the uh, group in terms of experience? 
Yeah. Um, it, it was a, it, it was real weird just becoming like sort of that spotlight for like the deep defensive backs. But luckily, um, guys like McKelsey Williams and um, Trayshawn Foster, and, um, just through their their leadership and the way they did things, I kind of just just sat back and watched how they handled situations and played and just kind of waited for my time. And um, I'm excited just to go out there with the, that, that young group we have. And Coach Jackson is an outstanding corners coach, and so we're going to be ready for that. And um, the whole back end is going to be – it's going to be nice because we're, it's, it's real young, but I think there's a lot of talent that we have right there. Okay. Uh, Joe, you have one more question? Back to Joe. Yeah, just uh, coach mentioned the six a.m. practices and how much he loves it as a student athlete. What's your opinion on six a.m.s? Um, actually, like I, I really don't mind it because once you're up at four forty-five, five o'clock, you're ready to go. You're uh, you, you're up. That cold air hits you. You're you're good to go anyways. And um, once you're there, we're there to work, and that's the goal. That's the mission, and we're just getting that all, all that figured out and all that done. And really, it's just kind of a blessing, you know, that's out of the way. And then you'll come back at 11 or 12, get your lift in, and then you're focused on school and meetings after that. So it's, it's actually a pretty nice schedule. And the, uh, you know, the practices have been pretty intense at times, the scrimmages. So just how, how much fun is it to kind of compete with each other, with your brothers, and know that you're getting each other better? Oh, it's, um, it's always a blast. Um, on Sunday, we had a scrimmage, and that was real fun. It was like 60, 65 plays of just going at it. Um, some live period, some thud, and that especially always going live, it, it gets a little bit more grittier and um, grittier and um, I'll say just just kind of wild on on both sidelines. A lot of juice, um, a lot of energy, and so that was fun, um, but not for sure. How much fun is it to have that juice uh, jersey? Oh, <laughs> um, that that is that's probably one of my favorite things to practice. Like. Uh, Three three corners or so have gotten the juice jersey, and um, but like it just shows you like okay we're coming to practice with that energy day in day out and it's just you know what what guy brought the energy the day before and who's gonna do it the next day it makes it interesting it makes it like almost an incentive to to bring that energy bring that explosiveness to the practices. I'm sorry if I missed it, but who came up with that juice jersey idea? I'm not sure how it was created. I don't, I don't know where the idea came from. I saw it just like being ramped up on Twitter, and that was funny. But it was it was probably Coach Henry or Coach Juni. You know, they definitely <laughs> deserve that credit. All right, thanks, Dylan. All right, any other questions for Dylan? All right, Dylan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, look forward to speaking with you more this year. And I want to thank everyone for uh, being with us today, for joining us for this uh, preseason press conference. And uh, we will be doing this on a weekly basis. Uh, and we'll get that schedule out to everyone. If you have any suggestions or ideas of how we can improve or make it better, certainly always willing to hear that as we go through this. It's new for everyone. And we appreciate uh, your coverage and your support. Be talking thank to you soon. Thanks, Thanks everyone.